Stephen from Oco Depot, and we have with us author Kevin J. Anderson. I really enjoyed the Dan Chamble novels, uh, the Zombie PI series. In a span of three years, you put out four books in a short story collection. Are there any plans to return to the series? Absolutely. I've got the next one outlined. Uh, I, it's called Taste Like Chicken. <laughs> I've got the next story. It's just a, a case because we publish them ourselves at, at Wordfire, and it's a case of trying to work around my other deadlines, and I've got two huge books that are coming out one month from now, the last Dune book and the last of my Saga of Seven Sons. So uh, Dan Shamble has had to rest in peace for just a little bit while I catch up on other things. How did the idea for that series originate? Did it all start with uh, the idea of a zombie detective? Yeah, I mean, there are so many, if you've watched TVs, there, there are so many like vampire detectives and werewolf detectives and all sorts of, you know, urban fantasy things and also watching The Walking Dead and see how grim and I mean I love The Walking Dead but seeing how grim and violent it is I thought it was basically time for uh, to do a zombie version of Spaceballs instead of Star Wars right so I, I thought the very concept of having a zombie detective trying to solve his own case while he's got a bleeding heart human lawyer for a, a partner who wants justice for the monsters and you've got all sorts of zany you know, a mummy who wants to be emancipated from the museum because he's a person instead of a, a an object, and you've got uh, ghosts who are uh, being charged with harassment for poltergeist activity, and it just you open up the situation and it lends itself to um, ridiculous situations. And I write these big, serious space operas and epic fantasies, and um, you know, Dune books, and and sometimes you just want to be really light and silly and and the Dan Chamble books gave me a chance to just have a lot of fun. One of the next books you have coming out is Eternity's Mind, uh, the final book in the Saga of Shadows trilogy. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be wrapping up your return to that series? Wow, I mean this this is a universe that I've spent maybe 15 or 16 years in, just developing it and all the characters and um, the worlds and the situations and I finished the first one, The Saga of Seven Sons, which was seven volumes long, seven years in a row, I turned them all in on time and then I took a break for a few years and then I came back with another trilogy that's, you know, a trilogy which is three books long because it's a trilogy, hello. Uh, so having that and just knowing that I've, I've written ten books in this series plus a, a prequel short novel and I've got a, another uh, connected novel that's coming out, a, a short one. It, these are great characters and, and great situations, but you know sometimes I just want to break. But this isn't—it's a big universe. I can always write new novels, just just original adventures in it. But it is after carrying that much story for that long, it's good to know that it's wrapping up. For those who haven't read uh, the Saga of the Seven Suns series, is it necessary to start there before going into the Saga of Shadows trilogy? Uh, no, intentionally. I mean, if you have read the other ones, you'll know a lot of this stuff. But I intentionally made it sort of like classic Trek and Next Generation Trek. It's still Star Trek, but it's two different time periods. So if you just start picking up the Saga of Shadows, there is enough background in it that you can easily get what you need to know, and, and we hope you'll want to go and read the first series. Aside from Eternity's Mind, you also have a Dune novel coming out at the same time, Navigators of Dune. Uh, like Eternity's Mind, this novel will be wrapping up a trilogy. How would you compare the conclusion of this trilogy to the other? That's even hard to, hard to think of because Brian Herbert and I have done uh, 15 Dune novels over, I, I don't even know, 20 years or something like that, 18 years. Uh, we've worked together writing like a million or two million words together and plotting all these stories. So it, it's like reaching the end of a marathon. It's this huge journey and you get there. Um, Eternity's Mind was, of course, my own original universe, my own characters. So therefore I could, you know, kill off as many as I wanted to. And in, in Dune there are more constraints because it's based on the original stuff. But Navigators of Dune ends a, a trilogy that's set 10,000 years before Dune. So it's a, a prequel and establishes everything so it, it really does it feels satisfying to be to be coming to the end on those but there's always so many more ideas that you have when you're building things like that that kind of leads into the next one um, will navigators of dune be a stopping point for the short term or do you have more dune ideas in store 
after doing the 15 books together that uh, Brian and I sort of need some time to recharge and it does it's a stopping point it, it ends uh, the trilogy so it's a good place to stop we're not leaving anybody hanging uh, but Frank Herbert left 10,000 years of history for us to be looking at so there could always be more Dune novels but we don't have anything else planned right now um, any ideas for doing more collaborations with Brian on uh, different series like he did with Hellhole? Well, I mean, we did, again, 15 Dune novels, and then we did the Hellhole trilogy. Um, we're still very good friends, and we've got some other ideas. We don't... Um, I, You're here meeting me right now at the World Science Fiction Convention, and we're doing 22 shows this year that um, from... Planet Comic Con in Kansas City and Salt Lake Comic Con and Phoenix Comic Con, uh, and I'm running my own publishing house, Wordfire Press. So I'm, I'm, and I've got several other books that I've got under contract. Uh, at the moment, we are we are happily like tossing ideas back and forth, but we don't have anything that we're like like fully involved in yet. Switching gears, one of my all-time favorite novels, any author, is The Edge of the World the first book in the Terra Incognita series. Each of the books in that series are very big. They're paperbacks, each are over 600 pages. How far ahead did you outline that when you started like the first book? I'm As a writer, I'm always a big outliner. I, I, it's like if you're an architect, I want to draw a blueprint before I start digging holes and building walls. Especially with a story that is as huge as the one in Terra Incognita. There's probably a dozen main characters and storylines all over the place and when you're plotting carefully in a big epic like this one thing happens over here that affects a different thing that happens in a different part of the world and if, if you don't plan and choreograph it then everything won't all come together right so I really outlined the entire story before I started writing anything I outlined the first book chapter by chapter, and then I had a summary of what was going on in book two and then book three. And then as I'm writing book one, I would get more ideas for book two, and I'd start adding them to notes. And so it would grow and expand as I'm writing, but I really I really did have my map before I started. Did the ending for the series change much or not at all from not your at outline? All. The, the main ending for the series and what was really going to happen was where I was uh, heading toward for the whole thing. Was it difficult juggling that many characters because there's extensive cast? Well, it, it's a very similar thing to what I did in the Saga of Seven Sons and the Saga of Shadows. I mean, there there are... Uh, first book in Saga of Shadows, I think, has 34 viewpoint characters in that one book. So that's one of the things that I that I do as a writer, is I have many, many storylines, big epic things. So I, I, I really like to sink my teeth in and to build up something like that. If I only have... Um, one character, it almost feels too constraining because how do they get to see and experience all the things that I, I need to? And on the flip side, though, all of my Dan Shamble books are first person, so they're one character and, and Dan Shamble sees whatever you need to see. It all depends on what the book itself requires. Did you employ any tricks to try and find the voice for each character? To try and give them their own distinct voice? Uh, in in Terra Incognita or in. Yeah. Uh, as far as as far as applying any tricks, I guess one of the interesting things is that I I do my writing with a recorder, a digital recorder, and I go out hiking and I dictate things. So when I'm actually thinking of their dialogue in my head and I'm speaking it aloud, it's almost like I can be an actor playing that part. So I it, it's easier for me to to do play acting of that character than if I was just sitting at a desk and typing words because I wouldn't necessarily hear them as clearly when I'm typing. So I guess that would, would constitute a trick. When you slip into the mindset of a different character, do you try and do you like hear a different voice for them that kind of helps you sink into that different character? Um, yeah, and, and you don't want to be around me if I'm writing like a serial killer or something. There are some really nasty people in Terra Incognita. In fact, one of my one of my all-time most loathsome villains ever, I think, is Prester Hannes, religious fanatic, murderer, the total psycho. And writing his chapters, um, my, my typist would write back saying, I don't like transcribing these chapters. <laughs> As a big Star Wars fan, I remember years ago you had a charity auction for an annotated manuscript, the Young Jedi Knight story, Darkest Night. Part of me has to ask, do you happen to have a copy of those notes? 
One of my biggest regrets was not trying to bid on that and win that auction. <laughs> well, buried in all of our boxes and records somewhere, we've got all the manuscripts for all the Young Jedi Knights books, and, and because Rebecca and I rewrote them back and forth, there are lots of manuscripts with notes in the margins and crossed out paragraphs and things. And, but of course, we want you to read the perfect version that came out at the end. And uh, we, We've got some around, and in fact, they... Uh, we occasionally get get invited to various auctions, charity auctions, and we'll go digging and find something that people might like. Would you ever well, think about releasing like trivia for your books like that, if such notes existed? Uh, well, I could always go digging, but that that's well, I was going to say that's or, Lucasfilm's call, but it, it's it's Disney's call to to see what. I mean, it's been I don't even know what we are now. I think my Jedi Academy books came out in, in 1993, so we're close to like the 23rd anniversary anniversary of it. Um, it would be kind of cool for a 25th anniversary of the Jedi Academy books, maybe. With all the books that you've written and the writing seminars you've done, how do you continue to push yourself to improve your craft as a writer? Well, I don't want it to become a job, and if you're just doing the same thing over and over again, then I might as well get like a regular job in an office. And uh, the way I challenge myself and the way I keep interested in my own project is to try something different. I want to do like like more world building in this one, or more historical background, or more um, character personal background, or um, more more emotions or something like that. I always try to do a little bit different with each book while still telling the good story that I want. And, and so as a writer, you always, it's like an athlete. You don't want to just go, well, I play basketball, so I'll just keep playing basketball. You want to keep getting stronger or faster or more accurate. And writing's a lot like sports in that sense. You want to keep getting better. And is there any other books or stories fans can look forward to? Well, in uh, so September 13th, at the same day as Eternity's Mind and Navigators of Dune comes out. A book of mine came out last year that I think is the best book I've ever done that I co-wrote with Neil Peart, the drummer from Rush, and that's called Clockwork Lives. That's available. That uh, just uh, won a major writing award and some stuff, and I'm very proud of that. So while you're waiting for Navigators of Dune, you can check that one out. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks.